The purpose of this video is to show you guys exactly what we offer in terms of team uh, lifting programming. Um, whether you're a college or a high school coach, a uh, bigger small school, bigger small squad, um, just the different options uh, that we can offer in terms of team programming uh, for your guys' lifting. So what you're looking at right now is actually a profile page. Um, so every athlete that's in your program, when you sign up to get programming from us, is gonna get their own document um, and their own profile page. So I'll zoom in here a little bit and we can take a look at exactly what we have here. So the top left, we have just some general information, their age, school, position, uh, height, and weight. And then if we go over here to the right, we also have a place for them to put their goals for the year. So that every time they come back to their profile page, it's right there for them to see. If we go a little bit to the left here, we're now at the place that we're gonna track um, some of their strength and power numbers. So this right here is gonna be their initial numbers. Um, so when you sign up for programming with us, one of the first things that you're gonna do is take your athletes uh, through a eval, and part of that eval is going through their strength and then their power. So figuring out where they're at as an athlete. So for instance, when the athlete gets this document, they can plug in uh, what they got in their evaluation for their strength and power numbers. So let's say they got uh, 315 on a squat, uh, 405 on a deadlift. Let's say they got 75 bench, 75 row, um, broad jump 79. Let's say they let her leap 72 and then went 31 and 32 for the med balls. If you come over here and simply click on the graph, now they have a nice visual representation of those numbers. And what I like about this is it gives us or allows us to both zoom in on specific things, but then also to take a step back. And what I mean by that is we can look and see if their strength numbers are up to par. We can look and see if their power numbers are up to par, um, if specific lifts are lower than maybe they should be or higher than maybe. Um, we thought they would be but not only that we can also zoom out and look at them as a whole athlete so this kind of gives us the close-up and then this gives us kind of the uh, full picture so we can see 1084 that's where this athlete is in terms of strength and power and um, when you put the two together so i think that's a good number both for uh, coach and athlete so for the coach um, you can kind of look at different athletes see where they're at to get a general idea of who your better athletes are um, and then for athletes, they can compare both to themselves, um, as we'll see later. Then they can also compare to other athletes um, that are maybe similar to them. And so I think that really helps to bring out uh, the competitive aspect of training um, in the team setting. So down here is the place where we're actually going to track um, our retests. So after three months of doing the program, we'll retest the exact same movements in terms of strength and power. So let's say this month they go 345 on their squat. Um, 440 on their deadlift, bench goes up to 80, row goes up to 85, let's say they now broad jump 81, on um, letter leap 75, and then 33 and 35 for their med balls. Come over here and click on the graph. So now, again, we have a nice visual representation uh, for the athlete to see, and they can look and say, okay, before I started this program, I was at 1084 um, overall as an athlete, and now I'm at 1174. And so I think just giving them concrete numbers like that and then giving them a couple graphs where they can kind of compare, that's just gonna help them to see um, the progress better than just plugging their numbers into a spreadsheet might. So we'll also retest um, at the six month point. So basically for as long as you're on the program, we'll retest every three months, um, unless you're in a, in season or something like that, um, obviously we would not retest uh, during that time. So the other thing that we'll be uh, tracking on their profile page is their body weight. So how this works is we have a, sp a spot for their initial weight. So let's say that they weigh 145 off the bat. Let's say their goal is to get up to 160 by the end of the program. So we're gonna take that goal out for three cells. And then month one, what we're actually gonna do instead of plugging a number directly in there is go to lifting log month number one down here at the bottom. And so this is the place where they're actually going to be getting their lifts um, and tracking the lifts that they do. If we zoom in a bit more, we can see that there's also a place for them to track their body weight um, before or during the first exercise of every lifting day. So we have week one, week two, three, and four for each day. So if we come over here to upper body day two in this instance, and then we go to week number four, that's gonna be their last lifting day of this month. So let's say on that day, they gained three pounds and they now weigh 148. We can go back to the profile page. We can see that the 148 is now 
in this table. If we simply click on the graph, we can now see, okay, so their goal is 160. They start at 145. Um, and now they're at 148. So they're trending up towards the line, even though they're not there yet. Um, this just, again, gives them that good visual representation um, that is good for them to see to be able to track the progress. So that is the their profile page. Um, also, in, the, in their tabs down here, we're going to have their lifting demo videos. So what this tab is, is any exercise that we program for them. Um, in their actual lifting logs, they're gonna be able to find the videos um, for those lifts or for those movements in this tab. So if they don't know what they're doing on one of their lifts here, they can come to this tab, easily find which exercise um, they're separated um, by warm-up, post-workout, upper, lower body. And then they're also in alphabetic order to make them very easy to find. They'll simply just click on the link, which will then take them to their YouTube video. They can watch the video, figure out what they're doing, and then go back to the movement in their lift. And again, that's every exercise that's in their log is gonna be right there um, for them to see. The next tab is for the warm-ups. So in this instance, we have four different options. Um, and this can change based upon what you have available. Um, in this particular case, we're gonna go through some soft tissue slash muscle, muscle activation stuff um, with RPR to start. And then we're going to hit some cars. So that's taking the joints uh, through full range of motion to make sure we're getting that mobility work in um, every day before the lift. And then we're gonna finish with a competitive game of either spike ball or racquetball. Um, and I think this is a really cool thing to add in and a unique thing uh, that you can do in the team setting, just to add in that competitive um, aspect so that they go into their lifting session um, after going through that competitive game um, with their teammates. So I think that's really a good, a good way to integrate that um, into the program. But if they don't have that available um, on any given day, they can also do some stuff such as jump rope, bike, um, to get their heart rate up, and then go through the cars after that. And again, this can be changed. Um, we can also do stuff where it's very specific um, upper body or lower body warmups. So whether that be like your pec, um, lat, T-spine stuff for an upper body day, um, kind of more conventional warmups, so we can also do that as well. Um, just depends on what you have access to and what you guys uh, need. So the next tab is going to be our recovery tab. And this one can vary a little bit um, depending on which option you actually choose for your team programming. But the thing that's always gonna stay the same here is number one, the seated bent over breathing. Um, there will be a demo video to demonstrate what that looks like um, for your guys. But the reason that we do this is essentially in a workout, your guys are gonna be in a sympathetic state. We wanna get them down into that parasympathetic state um, as quickly as possible so that they can recover and be ready for their next session. The quicker they can get down to that parasympathetic state and the longer they're able to stay there, the better they're gonna recover and again, hit that next workout session. So we're gonna have, the, we're gonna have them track their heart rate um, just so they can, they can see a lower heart rate generally means you're in a more parasympathetic state. Um, if you compare you against yourself, um, the lower you can get your heart rate, the more relaxed you are, the better you're gonna recover. So that's part one. Part two now says complete one exercise for each of your deficiencies to the right. So if you come to the right, we have a, your deficiencies uh, section. So how this will actually work is if you have a smaller team or if you have a group of guys um, like in the 20 to 25 range, whether you're a high school or a smaller college team, um, what we're actually gonna be able to do is put each of your guys through our physical assessment, which is this form right here. So what this form is, is a list of roughly uh, 23 different movements or exercises um, that we're gonna look at for your athletes. So anything from posture to gait, um, we're gonna look at your ankle, foot, um, hips, internal rotation, external rotation, hamstrings. Uh, we're gonna look at your scaps, um, your overhead mobility, pec, uh, T-spine, neck, wrist, lat, um, shoulder, internal, external. Everything that you can imagine that's gonna relate to the athlete. Um, there's gonna be a specific exercise for them to perform for each one of those things that we're looking at. So they're gonna be able to click on that link, uh, see the demonstration video, and then they're actually gonna take a video of themselves doing that exercise. And then at the bottom, they're gonna plug it into the spot under your YouTube links. Um, and then they'll either send that to me or you'll send that to me. Um, and I'll take a look at that. And then based off of that, I will pull up uh, this sheet right here. So what this sheet is, is just a list of all the exercises that are on that assessment sheet. And so I'm gonna be able to look at each of your athletes, look at their videos, say pass or fail on each exercise. And if they failed, um, I can make notes on 
why they failed or what they need to work on where their deficiency is. So based on what I see here from their videos and what I fill out here, they are then, or I'm gonna be able to then work in different things into their actual workout. So let's say that they have an ankle deficiency. I can now take this and plug it into their lifting log. So now when they finish the workout, okay, complete one exercise for each of your deficiencies to the right. They come over here. Under your deficiencies, it says ankle. I need to complete one of these. I must have an ankle deficiency, so I need to complete one of these. So that's going to be a very good and specific way um, to work on the deficiencies that we saw in their assessment. Now, if you have a larger team um, and you don't have the numbers that make this doable, we can still uh, work in the mobility with those teams as well. So what we would do in that situation is split these up into lower body um, and upper body deficiencies and exercises and correctives. And then we'd come over here and have a list of lower body and a list of upper body um, correctives or deficiency correctives. Um, and then they would be able to say, so after a lower body day, I'm gonna do one from each different compartment um, of the lower body correctives. And then on the upper body lifting days, they would do the same uh, for upper body. So they're still hitting all the necessary areas um, so that they're going to improve the ones that they're deficient in and then maintain the ones that they're not. So it's more of a global approach uh, versus the more specific approach that we take if you guys were to do the assessment. Um, so that's the first four tabs um, and then we actually get into the <clears throat> the lifting logs. So we saw a quick snapshot of this earlier but this is where their actual workouts are going to be and where they're actually going to track on um, the weights that they lift. So for instance, if I come down here and zoom in a bit, here we have a box squat. So let's say week one, set one, they do 295. Set two, they do 305. So we can see here, um, we're actually able to track the total poundage that they've lifted as well. So if we go to third set and let's say they get 315, after we hit enter, we're gonna see this number jump up. So we're just able to track on the total poundage that they get week to week. So let's say they go here in week three, let's say they get 305 for that first set, and then they go 315, and then let's say they go 325 for that third set. So now they can look and see, okay, week one I was at 3660, week two I'm now at 3780, I'm getting stronger. So that's again gonna help motivate them in the weight room to try to increase those numbers um, on the spot as they're lifting. So in addition to tracking each individual exercise, we also have um, a monthly tracking sheet. So week one, two, three, four, and then total poundage for the month. So we can go all exercise combined, how much did I lift in week one, week two, week three, week four, and then how much did I lift for the total month. So then we can go into other lifting logs, um, let's say month two, three, four, et cetera, and then we compare the we can compare on um, their total poundages and see if that's going up. Just another way to track on um, whether they're progressing and getting stronger in their lifts. Um, that's gonna be available on every month's uh, lifting log. So that's uh, the meat of the actual program. Um, the second part now that I wanna talk about is this is a level one uh, player template. So what that means is if we go back here to their initial eval, so there's certain numbers um, that I've set as baselines on their squat, deadlift, demo bench, and double row. So if they're under a certain number, they're gonna be put into the level one program. So essentially what that means is those are the guys that are pretty small and pretty weak and they just need to get stronger, eat a lot of food, and get bigger, right? So their programming um, for as long as they're on the program for, or for the six months um, is going to be very strength based and um, that's pretty much all they're going to do and then also i'm um, do some basic rotational movements and some basic um, jumping movements on top of their strength <clears throat> so that's level one so now if these initial numbers and in their initial testing eval were a little bit higher so they are over on um, that kind of bottom that bottom line but not quite to that top tier um we would then put them in the level two uh, template so the level two template is going to have all the same um, features. So they're gonna have their profile page, they're gonna have their demo videos, their warm-ups, and then they're gonna have the recovery, right? But now their actual the actual lifting that they're gonna be doing is gonna be specific to what they need. So whereas that level one is mainly strength, on um, level two, 
is going to start off with strength because yes, they need to get a little bit stronger and a little bit bigger. But then once they do that, they're probably strong enough. So now we need to translate that strength into some power and speed work while maintaining that strength. So that's just the difference between level one and level two. And then if they're even in that top tier, we then go to the level three of player program or template. Um, and so in this template, <clears throat> excuse me, in this template, we're going to spend even less time on strength um, because they're already pretty strong. They're probably strong enough um, for baseball already. So we're going to spend a little bit of time there, but not a lot. And then the rest of the time, we're going to be maintaining that strength while putting a heavy emphasis um, on the power and speed side so that we can see that strength transfer um, better over to the baseball field. So I think it's important um, to have those different levels. A lot of times uh, with stuff like this, guys, put everyone um, on the same template on the whole team. And I just don't think that works. Um, if you have a freshman that comes in and he's never touched a weight in his life, he should not be on the same lifting program um, as a senior that has four to five years of experience under his belt already. So I just think making different levels um, like that makes sense. And it's a good thing to do um, for your program. So just kind of take things full circle now. If you come back to that original uh, player profile page, if after the six months, now you guys retest, let's say they go 365 on their squat, uh, 465, whoops, 365 on squat, 465 on deadlift. Let's say they go 95s on bench, 100 on the row. Let's say they go 84 here. 83 on their lateral leap, and then let's say they go 34 and 36, right? So now we can come over here and click on the graph, and now they have a representation of how did they progress throughout the whole program. So they started at 1084, after three months they were at 1174, and now after six months they're at 1262. So they can visually see now that they've gotten stronger and more explosive um, as an athlete, and I think that's just a great way um, for them to stay motivated um, to continue training as they should. And not only that, um, if you maybe have your athletes print these profile pages off I'm at the end of the lifting program, you're also gonna be able to see, okay, which guys made the most progress, um, which guys really didn't, um, and just where's everyone at and what do they need going forward. So I just think it's a good, good thing to have um, everything in one place so that you can kinda uh, track the progress in the weight room and, and see how they did. So that's everything that I wanted to cover in this video. Uh, hopefully I gave you guys a pretty good idea of exactly what you'd be getting with this program. Um, if you have any further questions or you would like to reach out to get started, you can shoot me an email at brady at dacbaseball.com. I'm going to leave that email in the description below this video. Uh, but other than that, I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this and I look forward to hearing from you soon.